Lake Effect brings you conversations about what's happening in Milwaukee and the people, places, and organizations that shape our community. This is Lake Effect Spotlight from WUWM, Milwaukee's NPR. This week on Lake Effect, we've been exploring North Avenue. It cuts through a wide swath of neighborhoods that both Republicans and Democrats want to turn out to vote this year. It also reflects the area's racial and economic divides. To find out more about the demographic trends along this corridor, WUWM's Mayan Silver is joined by John Johnson. He's a research fellow at Marquette Law School's Lubar Center. I guess I'll just start off by asking you, is North Avenue interesting to you as a public policy researcher in Milwaukee, and why? So many of the Midwestern cities, the Rust Belt cities, are you know, both really segregated on a lot of different dimensions and then also have this um, very regular grid system for the streets. And so you can find these specific streets in different places where um, you see almost everything that that metro area has to offer along one street. Um, when I spent time in Chicago in grad school, I would go on Augusta Boulevard there. And North Avenue is a similar thing here in Milwaukee where you can go from very wealthy suburbs to the neighborhoods that show you just about everything the city has to offer within the city itself to like the beautiful shores of Lake Michigan on the other side. So we're talking about North and you kind of alluded to it, everything that you can find along the street, you know, maybe start by telling us what do you see as the most interesting demographic trends along North Avenue? One of the ones I've been thinking about the most lately is where the population is growing and declining or managing to stay the same because of shrinking household sizes. Neighborhoods that aren't building any new houses are usually shrinking in the total number of people living there, which has consequences for political campaigns because there's fewer votes that you're going to net out of a place like that. You know, the city of Milwaukee's population has fallen to nearly just 560,000 people. We always used to say 600,000, and we're a long way from that now. And part of the reason for that is the neighborhoods in the sort of central section of North Avenue um, have seen their population fall by thousands in just the last 20 years. And by even more if you go back to 1960 when the city's population peaked. And part of that is because of um, freeway construction, both existing freeways and freeways that were never built but that neighborhoods were, were raised to prepare for. Um, and then part of it is due to subsequent, you know, economic troubles that have led many people to leave. But then if you look in the suburbs, you see a little bit of that happening, too, even in neighborhoods that when you visit them, they feel um, in some cases even affluent, um, certainly in high demand to live in. But we see their populations declining a little bit due to people having smaller families. In contrast, if you go to the furthest east part of North Avenue, closest to the lake, those are some neighborhoods that have actually grown because they built so many more apartment buildings in recent years. And so that's a, a really vote-rich area that political campaigns spend a lot of time trying to turn out the vote in. So if I was going to ask you about the interesting demographic trends about maybe like a few stretches of North Avenue, I guess we could start out with exactly that far east side area that you were just talking about. You said it's grown more housing. It's very, it's very blue. It's a very, you know, vote rich area for Democrats. What is the demographics like there? It's very segregated white, um, upper income, highly educated, not entirely upper income because there's a lot of renting students and, and, and people like that. But um, mansions you'll find in this neighborhood. It has become a bit more racially diverse in the last 10 years. You do see a trend in that direction, but it remains um, uh, among the city's more heavily segregated neighborhoods. And to what do you attribute the the strong blue character of that area? It's become even more democratic leaning in um, recent cycles. And if you think about the sort of people who are most enthusiastic about the Democratic Party in recent cycles, it tends to be people with higher levels of education is the number one thing, and also sometimes higher levels of income. And we see both of those things in that neighborhood, as well as students, of course, who are always a Democratic-leaning constituency. And then you travel, you travel west along that stretch. You go through River West. You hit uh, Reservoir Park and Kadish Park. 
and you continue on, you hit Bronzeville. That's a historic arts and entertainment district for the black community in Milwaukee, and there's been some economic growth there lately. Also, it kind of butts into the the freeway that 43 cuts through there. Is there anything interesting demographically to know about that area? It's remarkable how quickly it shifts from a large white majority to a large black majority. Holton Avenue is such a, a stark dividing line on, on any map and just your experience of traveling through there. And I've kept on expecting that line to become blurred, you know, with movement of one one group more to one side of that line or the other. And, you know, there's some of that Harambe has become a little bit more diverse. But in general, um, that line has really held up in a way that I think I think is a little unusual in modern American cities. It's why it's an example of the sort of extreme segregation that characterizes Milwaukee, um, and it's still the case today. You know, that sort of continues through, you know, 40th and even into Sherman Park. It's if you travel the the maybe like more than a dozen neighborhoods that, that North Avenue slices through, there's very, it's very much patchwork when it comes to economic development and what's going on on those streets. You'll see you know, hair braiding places and some government buildings, but there are places with boarded up businesses and houses, places with porches that are dilapidated and not much grocery access. And so I was wondering, you've done some looking into Milwaukee as a whole based on the U.S. Census data. What's the story there? What's the headline there about segregation in Milwaukee? Mostly uh, that extreme black-white segregation that we see the section from the existing freeway west to about 40th Street, one of the most immediate things you'll notice traveling along it is how many empty lots there are, um, large parking lots for buildings that don't get a lot of traffic and that kind of thing. And that's because that neighborhood was leveled to build the Park West Freeway, uh, which was never actually built. Um, opposition from the Sherman Park neighborhood uh, ended up stopping that. Um, but a lot of the land that was raised for that freeway has never seen any development since then. So it's just empty now. Uh, And that's been a constraint on, you know, making that neighborhood a popular place to live because there's there's just this sort of gaping hole in the middle of it. But then as you travel west past that to the area that wasn't destroyed to make the freeway, you actually run into the most racially integrated part of North Avenue. This is the uptown neighborhood, part of Sherman Park, and then the northern end of the Washington Heights neighborhood. And and there you see it can vary from one block to another, but some places have a, a slight black majority. Some places have a slight white majority. There's a growing population of Latino people there, although um, that's less so than in other parts of the city, um, and then Asian residents as well. There's some Asian grocery stores you pass through that stretch. Um, And so you do, on the more western edge of the city of Milwaukee, you do finally find uh, an actually racially integrated stretch of North Avenue. And for people that aren't quite up to speed on it, could you give a little, you know, uh, briefer on the the freeway situation and how it, it impacted North Avenue? Yeah, when freeways, so Milwaukee was built before the freeways existed, before we had invented freeways. And so Uh, As with so many legacy cities in America, the freeways cut through the existing neighborhoods in the city when they were built in the 50s and 60s and then into the 70s. And the largest north-south freeway, I-43, cut through a lot of the historic, prosperous black neighborhood, Bronzeville, although uh, the portion immediately east of the freeway is still uh, architecturally intact, and that's where we've seen a lot of the recent investment. But then there was this plan to build even more freeways than were ultimately built that would create loops um, through the city. This was sort of what people imagined would be the most efficient way to move traffic back then. Uh, And so what was called the Park West Freeway Project leveled this enormous swath of the city along North Avenue and just south of it. And then the freeway was, in fact, never built. And so where its companion Park East Freeway Project leveled some land that has seen a lot of development in the area closer to downtown on the east eastern half of Milwaukee. This is where we see Pfizer Forum, where the Bucks play, where the RNC was held, and also some development from the Milwaukee School of Engineering. In that Park West freeway area along North Avenue on the sort of near north side of the city, there's been 
um, scarcely any development, and much of that land simply remains vacant today so many decades later. And how do you see that impacting the economic access of that neighborhood? It means that there's just not a lot for people to visit who live in that neighborhood, whether they're walking or taking the bus or traveling by car. That's that's an area that was a thriving commercial district in 1960, and now um, it's not that there's a. It's not just that there's a lot of boarded up buildings, although there are. There's also a lot of places where there aren't buildings at all. There's just an empty field um, because what was there got torn down for a freeway that was never built. And I'd imagine that what you're talking about on that border of like Holton, the city, you know, the eastern part of the city and then passing Holton to the west is kind of a similar story of, of what you would happen around 60th Street where you've got Sherman Park and then you've got Wauwatosa, which is, I think when I looked it up, it was 80 percent white. Yes. Wauwatosa is a majority white suburb, although Tosa has become more diverse. It's among the, the suburbs that has seen growing racial and ethnic diversity in the last 20 years, I would say, um, although it still remains majority white and relatively expensive, although not as expensive as some of the Waukesha County suburbs like Brookfield. And so what do you think the story is there about, you know, the Holton divide, the 60th Street divide? Is Metro Milwaukee still the most segregated in the country? And if so, by which factor? Yeah, the segregation between like white people and Latino people or white and Asian, Latino and Asian, those levels of segregation are not the highest in the country, but specifically black-white segregation is the highest or the second highest, depending on how you measure it in Milwaukee. Would you say that North Avenue sort of epitomizes the the black-white segregation that unfortunately makes Milwaukee at the top of that list? Yes, I don't think there's a street that more clearly shows that than North Avenue. On the flip side, what does North Avenue tell us about what connects us? Well, you do have some neighborhoods on the western edge of the city there that are more diverse and they tend to be to not have enormous wealth either. They're not poor or rich. They're middle class, some working class areas. And those tend to be the parts of Milwaukee where you find the most integrated neighborhoods or the sort of working to lower middle class neighborhoods. Some of those are um, desirable enough for upwardly mobile families to be like, oh, this is a place that I can buy a house, but still cheap enough that upwardly mobile mobile families can afford to. And so you'll find um, neighborhoods like that. And that section of North Avenue is one of them. Thanks so much, John, for filling us in on all these demographics. Thanks so much. Thank you. That was WUWM's Mayan Silver, speaking with Marquette Research Fellow John Johnson for a series examining the political importance of North Avenue. You can find more interviews like this one by visiting wuwm.com slash lake effect. And while you're there, subscribe to the Lake Effect Spotlight podcast.